When you're a five-star quarterback, it's only natural for people to be talking about the NFL and all the high expectations that are becoming your way. When you're receiving scholarships for Power 5 schools as a freshman or a middle schooler, those expectations feel even heavier. That was the case for JT Daniels. He left high school early to play for his hometown school of USC, was the next great player out of Matter Day High School, and unfortunately never was able to live up to the hype. His college career lasted six seasons, and he played for four different teams. Each time, he seemed to fizzle out a little bit more, and while he had so much talent, for whatever reason, it just didn't work out anywhere he went. In today's video, we're going to take a look back at JT Daniels' career. We're going to go through how he became a five-star prodigy, talk about all four schools he played at, and ultimately, what ended up going wrong for him, and why did he not pan out. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know what player I should cover in my next one, and also be sure to leave a like if you want to support what I'm doing here. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about what happened to JT Daniels. JT was born in Irvine, California, which is located near Los Angeles, and he was always a talented football player. He was coached personally by his dad, who was a former prep quarterback himself in the state of Michigan. His mom helped keep him focused on both extracurricular and academic activities, so it made sense once he reached high school that he would attend Matter Day. They were a prestigious football program known for their obvious football talent and producing great quarterbacks such as Matt Leiner and Matt Barkley. His mom told The Athletic, quote, He's always been an old soul. He was just a wise and quiet child, and he has a lot of layers to him. He's intense but laid back at the same time, which is probably why he's a good quarterback. JT didn't immediately step into the starting role his freshman season, though. Senior Matt McDonald was the original starter, but he got injured in the second game of the year, so Daniels would have to step in, and he kept the job for the remainder of the season. He would immediately show out, as he threw for over 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns in just his freshman season. He led Matter Day to 10 wins and a semifinal finish. His high school offensive tackle Tommy Brown said, quote, When he came into that first game, you could just see he had the nerves, but we sat him down after the first drive and told him we were going to protect him. JT handed it pretty well and went on to be pretty good. He ended up throwing for 446 yards and 5 touchdowns in just his fourth start, and a couple weeks later, scholarships started to pour in. The first one came from Cal, and soon he was attending his first Elite 11 quarterback camp where more scholarships from big-time programs started to come in. His Elite 11 coach said, quote, I put him in with the number one group throughout the day just to kind of watch him compared to the more experienced guys and it was never too big of a stage for him. After that, Daniels would earn the starting job for the next season for Matter Day, leading them to a 13-1 season and a championship game appearance. He threw for nearly 5,000 yards and 67 touchdowns, and at one point, he had thrown more touchdowns and incompletions. This might have seemed incredible, but he was throwing to some pretty insane players. He was throwing to Brew McCoy and both Osiris and Amon Ra St. Brown. He attributed most of his sophomore year success to those receivers, saying, quote, I'm going to assume you know my receiving core and how stacked it is. By the start of his junior year, JT's college offer list had grown, but being on a team with so many high-profile recruits, he had a lot of players to look up to for advice when it came to scholarships. He said, quote, I've learned to do it the right way. Those guys handle their business on and off the field. They keep it simple, and they know what they want. Mostly, he knew he had to wait for the perfect offer. He solidified himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the country his junior season, throwing for over 4,000 yards and 54 touchdowns, while also rushing for nine more on the ground. Once again, Matter Day had an undefeated season and a high school national championship. While everything was looking up for JT's senior season, it was looking a little bit more complicated on the recruiting front. He had earned a rating as the number two pro-style quarterback in the country behind Trevor Lawrence and the number one recruit in the state of California. He was a five-star player and a nearly perfect composite rating of 99. 24-7 Sports even already had him listed as the 342nd best recruit of all time. His offer list by the end of his junior year was extensive. He had offers from USC, UCLA, and Washington, and also Alabama, LSU, Notre Dame, and Michigan. He eventually would shrink it down to four, with Michigan, USC, Washington, and Stanford. From there, he decided to commit to USC just a few days after taking a visit to Michigan. But his recruitment saga wasn't over just yet. Considering the really bad quarterback situation USC had during 2018, JT decided he'd reclassify from 2019 to 2018. He'd graduate high school early and then would enroll at USC at 17 years old. He said, quote, I've started varsity in the number one league in America for three years. I've seen enough of what the Trinity League has to offer, and I don't think there's much more to learn in high school for me. This wasn't his idea, though. It was actually suggested by 24-7 Sports National Analyst Greg Biggins. JT said, quote, about a week later, I started to look into the quote, and I thought it could be the best decision for me. He did this by taking extra classes at Matter Day, and according to their AD, he took almost 10 classes a semester to make sure he could do it. 
She said, quote, we're not talking about basket weaving either. It was core classes, honors classes, and things that were difficult. He ended up graduating from Matter Day with a 4.0 GPA. This was because there was a completely legitimate chance that he could win the starting job at just 17 years old. So he decided to hand Matter Day's football program to Bryce Young, who was his backup, and now it was his time to shine at USC. After suiting up for USC during summer practice in 2018, he was named the Trojans' starting quarterback by their head coach, Clay Helton. In 11 games for the Trojans, he completed 216 passes for 2,672 yards and 14 touchdowns. He also ended up having 10 interceptions, and he did quite well for being a 17-year-old. Trojans went on to finish the year at 5-7, though, which was enough for them to change offensive coordinators and hire Graham Harrell. Harrell instantly reopened the quarterback competition and let true freshman quarterback Keaton Slovis have a chance at it. According to Harrell, JT had, quote, the most room to improve, but he probably had taken the biggest steps, too. Unfortunately, JT was not able to finish his sophomore year, as while he was the starter in their season opener against Fresno State, he threw for 215 yards and a touchdown before he tore his ACL in meniscus. He was done for the year, and now he handed the keys over to Keaton Slovis, whether he liked it or not. Slovis went on to have a historic freshman season for USC, becoming the future, and already everybody had forgotten about JT. He would later apply for a medical redshirt and would end up taking it, but when it was all said and done, he saw the writing on the wall and that Keaton Slovis was going to be the guy. He decided to enter the transfer portal, and in April, he found his new school. He decided to transfer to Georgia, and this was a huge get. When JT would transfer to Athens, he was in a quarterback battle with Dewan Mathis, Stetson Bennett, and Jamie Newman. Newman had just done a terrific job at Wake Forest, and he was expected to be the guy, but then he foolishly opted out. Stetson Bennett was the walk-on hero, and Dewan Mathis was highly recruited. All four guys had a legitimate chance, but as I said, Newman took himself out of the competition, but there was some trouble brewing behind the surface. JT Daniels was not yet cleared to play, so they'd have to go with a more inexperienced option. While Dewan Mathis would start the first half against Arkansas, he was later benched in favor of Stetson Bennett. Bennett did an alright job, but he got completely exposed against Alabama, and everyone was ready for Daniels to play. I mean, he was the most hyped guy in the room. Ultimately, he would eventually step in, and in the Georgia uniform, he would play in four games, throwing for 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns, and only two picks. He showed a lot of flash in those four games, and everyone was super excited for the 2021 season, where in week one, he would duel it out with DJ Uyangole at Clemson. This was a huge matchup, but unfortunately, Daniels was pretty underwhelming those first few games. He later got injured again, leading Bennett to start the next two games until he returned. He would fight injuries all season long, but against Vanderbilt, the pain was too much and he decided to be done. Stetson Bennett would now come in for the remainder of the season, and he ended up leading them to a national championship. It was absolutely ridiculous, but JT Daniels was now pretty much done at Georgia. Whenever Stetson struggled, everyone was wondering what JT was doing and why Kirby Smart wouldn't play him, but ultimately, no one really cares because as I said, Georgia won a championship and Stetson Bennett etched his name into Georgia football history. JT Daniels was forgotten about. He decided to enter the transfer portal for the second time, and this time he'd have to transfer to a lower level. He was only considered a three-star transfer, and he decided to follow his old offensive coordinator from USC, Graham Harrell, to West Virginia. He was starting fresh in 2022, and even though West Virginia is obviously a good school and in the Big 12, they were a step down from Georgia. JT came into the West Virginia room and would end up beating up Garrett Green, Will Crowder, and Nika Markiel, and JT would be given a long leash. Harrell said, quote, it's very similar to the way he was before. He's always been intelligent and understands football really well, and now I think he understands it even better. But unfortunately, JT could not make it work at West Virginia. After being named the starter, he got a lot of hype from news outlets, and it just didn't really work out. He only played in 10 games, and he started for them all the way up until the Oklahoma game, and he compiled a 3-6 record. He was eventually benched in favor of Garrett Green, who once again led West Virginia to victories and took the starting job for him. JG Daniels had now flamed out at three straight schools, and West Virginia was by far the most disappointing one. He decided to transfer again, and he would use his final year of eligibility to go to an even lower level. In his one season at West Virginia, he threw for 2,100 yards and 13 touchdowns, but had nine interceptions and a ton of losses. He'd end up bringing this stat line into Rice, where he would finish out his career. They were in their first year in the American Conference, and like USC and West Virginia before, he told ESPN he chose Rice because of their pro-style offense they ran. He also returned to get another coach he was familiar with, as Rice head coach Mike Bloomgren had been Stanford's OC when they recruited JT in high school. Bloomgren said, quote, We actually flew him in while we were playing the bowl game in Mobile, but we spent all day Sunday with him, and this showed that it would be a great fit to have him here at Rice. 
Once again, JT could not complete a full season, as with the Owls, he would sustain a concussion against SMU, which would put him out for the remainder of his career. In nine games with the Owls, he managed to throw for 2,400 yards with 21 touchdowns and seven picks. His career was now over. Over his entire college career, he threw for 9,300 yards with 66 touchdowns and 32 picks. He did have a national championship ring from his time at Georgia, but all in all, JT Daniels was a disappointment. He could never stay healthy, he flamed out at all four schools he was at, and his replacement just always looked better than him. While not all of it is his fault, he will go down as a huge disappointment. But what does the future look like for JT? Well, despite being able to make a run at the NFL if he wanted to, he decided he was done playing football as a career choice. After six years of college football and a ton of injuries, he announced he would medically retire. But that doesn't mean he's done with the sport. He told ESPN that he planned to go into coaching. He said, quote, I'm definitely excited to get into coaching, that's for sure. I love playing, but I always knew one day I'd coach. I didn't think it would come this soon, but one day I knew that is what I was going to be doing. JT will probably be on the sidelines again, but this time with a headset. So why was JT Daniels a bust? Well, it's obvious. He did not live up to his high school expectations, and there are a few reasons why he didn't. The first one of note is definitely injuries. At every school he was at, he was injured, and eventually that takes a huge wear and tear on your body, and it also gets in your head. He was probably tired of rehabbing, tired of always being hurt, worried about getting hurt, and when you're a quarterback and under that kind of microscope, it really does have an effect. Another reason he didn't live up to the hype was because of the quarterbacks that were behind him. Especially players such as Keaton Slovis and Stetson Bennett just happened to be better than him and came in at the right time and wowed crowds and people forgot about JT. Obviously JT was good though because he was the starter over both of those guys at the beginning of the season, but once he got hurt, the keys had to be given over to them and they just looked better. Honestly, I think the biggest factor though is he just had bad luck. Everything looked perfect for JT coming out of high school he just didn't get a good hand of cards. He had some really good backups, some really bad injuries, and honestly, I don't think he picked the best situations either. He went into a school like USC with monumental pressure, followed Graham Harrell to West Virginia, who's proven not to be very good, and went to Rice where there was really no upside. The move that made the most sense for him was Georgia, but he got screwed there only because of injuries. He actually looked good when he played. Overall, it is really sad though. JT Daniels was a prodigy coming out of high school and seemingly was the next big thing. I remember hearing about him all the time while I was in high school, and many truly thought he was going to be a starter in the NFL one day. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him, but I wouldn't say he's a complete bust or disappointment either. Had some good moments, and now he's going into coaching, and I think he's going to do really well at that. But what do you guys think? If you're a USC, West Virginia, Georgia, or Rice fan, what went wrong for JT Daniels, and who is another player or quarterback or crew I can take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and until next time. Peace.